Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to get an A star in A level chemistry. A level chemistry. I honestly loved A level chemistry. I mean, I'm doing chemistry at university and chemistry really snuck up on me because I didn't really like it that much at GCSE. I only did it because my school made me do it. But it, and I was planning to drop it at the end of year 12, maybe get a B in it because I'd heard how hard it was. I was thinking, okay, maybe if I can scrape a B, then I'll just drop it. And I ended up getting an A star and a pretty high A star at that. The max you could get was 300 in AQA chemistry. And I think the grade boundary for an A star was 237. I ended up getting 282 in my A level chemistry. And there was a really silly mistakes that I still remember. I honestly think I could have gotten higher. I got three A stars in my A levels in maths, chemistry and physics, but chemistry was my highest A star. I'm here to share tips with you guys because I love chemistry. I want more people to love it and get good grades in it. So my first tip for chemistry is to understand it because I honestly think like as long as you understand the content, you should be okay. Like just by simply understanding and memorizing the content, even without doing papers, I feel like you could get a decent grade. Like obviously you do papers to get an A star, but I just want to show you how far you can get by simply just understanding and knowing, like memorizing the content. It's important that you understand what's going on because sometimes in questions they try and make it a bit, mm, but sometimes I feel like it's not even that um, complicated. Like, you know, as long as you understand it, you should be okay. So yeah, I would use, I obviously, the first thing is obviously listen to your teacher in lesson and ask questions in lesson. Um, I personally wasn't embarrassed to ask questions. You know, we kind of had that culture in our class. If your class is a bit more uptight, just ask questions. Like honestly, nobody is sitting that exam for you. Nobody's there with you. Let them laugh at you. Let them look at you. At the end of the day, you're the one who's going to be getting the grades. So make sure you ask questions. And because I kind of liked chemistry, I wasn't satisfied by just swallowing my questions. I would always ask and I think that really helped me. Sometimes um, I would come across like I would have a question later when reviewing and stuff and I can't ask my teacher at that time right so what I would do was use chem guide. So chem guide was honestly so good like I really love chem guide. He was really good for just reading it and just understanding it. Um, you know, his content is for many many exam boards so not necessarily for writing notes but just understanding it um so more the more calculation stuff i would use this is guy on youtube elliot rental like i remember i got really stuck with buffers and he had like a 40 minute video on buffers and i watched that like three times like literally that was really helpful and also like electrochemical cells i struggled with that as well he has like long videos going through the content and then doing examples so yeah he was really good elliot rental and chem guide i used to like just understand the content um i heard i've heard that chem revise is also quite good the next thing you need to do now that you've understood the content cool now you need to memorize it there's a lot to memorize so what i did personally was flashcards i made flashcards and i used the digital flashcard system called anki i really like anki because anki puts the content into your long-term memory they use spaced repetition so that you do your flashcards and then Anki will then program. The program will then decide when to show you it next. So maybe if you get it right, it will show you it in five days. If you get it right again, then 10 days, 15 days, you know, and then if you get it wrong, it will show you it tomorrow or in two days. Do you know what I mean? So you get to rate how quickly you got the answer and then it will then decide when's the next time to show you the card. And I think that's really, really useful because and puts things in your long-term memory as in when it came to year 13 exams honestly chemistry i got it was my highest a star but when it came to revising it like in that exam season i put the least work in it i put more work in maths and physics because i found them harder and i felt like i knew the chemistry content because i'd been doing my flashcards every day since year 12 I knew it. Like, what is ionization energy? I know that. Like, what are the colors for the transition metals? I know that. Like, literally, I knew it because I've been doing my flashcards. Don't be that person who leaves it last minute and then you have to cram. Every time we had a mini test um, in class, I revised for it like it was my A level. I revised for it. I did so many past paper questions. And yeah, in my mini test, I usually got full marks or one or two marks off your full marks. You know, so revise for every test, like your life depends on it. So that way it's really cementing, like the content is really like cemented in your brain when it comes to your final exam. 
So yeah, that was my third tip. It was to do past paper questions on the topics after you've done them in class. So my teacher made this easy for us because we had mini tests. But if you don't do mini tests, then make your own mini tests. So after you've learned a topic, go on Physics and Maths Tutor. I use Physics and Maths Tutor to find my questions. They have like question packs, like topic by topic, and I will just do the packs. And if I do the packs and I get a question wrong, I would obviously mark it wrong, correct it, and alter my flashcard. So if I wrote what was on my flashcard, but what was on my flashcard didn't get me the mark, then obviously I would change the flashcard. If there were some things in the questions that I just didn't know, which often happened, then I would make sure to add it to my flashcards. And just any really difficult questions, I will add it to my flashcards. So my flashcards were always being updated and they were always being reviewed. So that's really important. So yeah, I was just doing questions after questions. You know, I was doing um blurts, like mind maps, like when we had um tests and stuff, like all the mechanisms, I'll just get a blank piece of paper, write out all the mechanisms, the conditions, the reagents, just write it, write it, write it, and then check. And then see, look in your, do that by memory, by the way, like do that from memory, and then look in your notes and see what you forgot, and then focus on what you forgot. So blurting is a really good technique. So yeah, honestly, I feel like for chemistry, is really the formula is really understand the content, memorize the content, do practice paper questions. I feel like the questions are quite repetitive. Like honestly, they're repetitive. Like I think some of the questions in my A levels, it was like I'd seen a similar question, you know? Like literally they will ask you, oh, explain the trend in atomic radius moving from sodium to what is it, argon? I don't really know what the other element is, but you know three mark question like that literally always like it comes up all the time you know it's literally like you should do the question so much that you know in your mind what the mark scheme you can visualize the mark scheme you have to say atomic radius decreases why increasing nuclear charge same shielding three marks like, you should be able to know that you know because you've done so many questions so yeah honestly this video shouldn't be too long like like i said to you guys chemistry was my highest a star but in exam season like weeks leading up to my a levels chemistry got the least attention because only because i've been working on it from year 12 obviously if i hadn't been then i would have to do a lot more work in exam season but because i revised for every mini test like my life depended on it i did my flashcards very regularly i made sure i understood each topic i didn't leave it you know like don't leave it don't come back to it later because then it'll just build up i made sure i understood every topic um well when it came to my a levels all i had to do was just refresh my memory do four papers and in those four papers i was getting really high and then go into the exam and you know i got my a star so yeah that is how i got an a star in a level chemistry those are my tips and i fell in love with, i honestly fell in love with chemistry and now i'm going to be doing it at oxford university i'm so so happy if you found this video helpful please give it a like share it with your friends um, who are doing chemistry or who want to do chemistry um, comment down below anything that I may have missed out any questions that you may have and also subscribe to my channel for more academic content and also Oxford University content will be coming soon I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one bye